and thanks for joining us once again on Face Off. Now, one of the many stories making headlines these days is the deregistration of the Democratic Action Party, DAP, the man in the center of that controversy. We have him in our studio and honor to have him. YB Zairiel K. Johari, welcome. Yes, uh, thanks. <laughs> Selamat Hari Raya. <laughs> Summer to everyone, yes. And when I say um, the man in the middle of that controversy, because, yes. yeah, that's actually um, one of the reasons, yeah, mm -hmm. yourself, which led to this issue. Sure. Um, Ernie Chen is joining us as well, he's the resident guest. Um, when are elections expected to be held? Um, there will be a meeting this Thursday mm -hmm. of the old CC, right. uh, which I'm not a part of. So they will actually decide the details, including venue and uh, when they will be held. Are you going to be winning again to or create another controversy of the whole entire situation? <laughs> I didn't ask for the first controversy in the, in the first place. Um, of course, you cannot predict how the members vote, how the delegates vote. But uh, I will be offering myself. I uh, feel even though we are forced into this situation, we basically have no choice but to do a re-election, despite not having done wrong. Um, and despite the ROS not having proven that we have done anything wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I see this as an opportunity to once again go down to our delegates uh, and hopefully they will choose um, the best candidates uh, based on ability, based on performance. Mm -hmm. Based on your CEC, um, if you don't make it to the CEC this time around, what happens? Well, I think it's... Uh, uh, I don't think it will affect my work as an MP. I don't really think it will affect my work in the party. I mean, uh, it's a contest in the party. We try our best. But you'll be more effective uh, as a CEC member, of course. Oh, no doubt. Within mm -hmm. the party, definitely. I mean, having a platform helps. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'll say, you know, let the delegates decide. How many Malays, Indians and Chinese are in the CEC in numbers? Uh, currently, there are... Uh, for the exact breakdown, um, there is myself and uh, Arifin Omar. There is uh, we have a Kadazan, uh, YB Dr Edwin. We also have an Iban, um, Dr John Bryan. We also have uh, a couple of Indians for sure, uh, Kula Kapil Singh, our chairman, uh, his son Gobin. Um, so you know, as you can see, uh, DAP basically represents. Uh, a whole spectrum of Malaysian mm -hmm. society. But not very equal then, yeah? No, of course not. It also reflects the membership. Uh, DAP is a Chinese-based party in the sense that most of the members uh, are Chinese. So it is a Chinese-based party? Uh, it definitely draws its membership uh, mainly from Chinese. So would that be a hindrance for the Malays to join the party, to become a more Malaysian party? Um, well, you have to understand the history of how DAP ended up uh, basically as a Chinese-based party, simply because they were a fringe party um, in the eight, 70s, 80s. There was completely no access to the media. There was no internet then. There was no way to uh, get your message across. So as a result, you tend to champion very fringe issues, very extreme issues. And so that was how um, sensational, sensationalist opposition politics came about. So DAP is one of those parties and then of course you're going to champion issues like uh, Chinese schools or things like that which are very fringe issues um, but which then turn you into that kind of fringe party. But that's history. History, that's history. history is what DAP is being a Chinese party and very Chinese based. Moving forward, I'm sure you know very well, the Malaysians want a Malaysian based party, meaning to say representation of all as per mentioned by you just now in the CC. So going forward, how can DAP uh, attract and be more appealing to the Malays to the other uh, Kadazan, Dusuns, the Indians, instead of being still, is a Chinese-based party. And on that note, YB, are you a Malay or a Chinese? Well, I always say I'm a Malaysian, and that's all that should matter. Hmm. So, being DAP itself, uh, as you mentioned just now, is a Chinese-based party. Isn't that contradictory yes. to what you are saying then? It's, it was, as you say, historically a Chinese-based party, which is trying very hard now to sort of mainstream itself. So how do you mainstream a party that's been Chinese-based for so long, so many years? How do we go forward from here to make it a Malaysian-based party? By focusing on middle politics. F what are some of the things that's middle politics? Uh, I think in around 2006, okay. when uh, Guan Ying uh, came into power as the Secretary General, um, he immediately articulated a new line for the AP, mm -hmm. a new vision, which he called Middle Malaysia, basically. 
and uh, basically saying, let's move away from fringe politics, let's move away from extreme positions, and let's take the middle ground. Let's speak the language of all Malaysians, mm -hmm. uh, be they Malay, Chinese or Indian. So what is that middle language, middle ground that Malaysians are looking for? In Lim Guan or in your terms, well, in DB terms? I think uh, it's important that we move away from racial politics and by articulating a politics of policies. For example, we talk right. about uh, income inequality, we talk about uh, public transportation, we talk about uh, urbanization, we talk about um, education. Mm -hmm. Well, these are issues that affect everyday Malaysians, the middle Malaysians, so to speak. Yeah, but I think what Ernie was also getting at was that, you know, because uh, DAP has always been seen as a Chinese based party, and it will be very difficult, I would think, because based on perception, people would still look at DAP as very Chinese. They are, you know, Barisan National is always taking uh, DAP to task for being racist. Uh, that is the perception built up over decades of obviously propaganda. The perception so. becomes reality, right? And uh, that's exactly what the people on the on the ground is saying. The the ground is saying that DAP is a Chinese party. Why would I want to join a Chinese based party if they're gonna become a Malaysian based party? So what are things that is being done by DAP to really remove that perception so that it's no longer a reality? Well I think first of all, first of all, um, the DAP also has the most number of Indian uh, elected representatives, even more than MIC, for two terms in a row. Uh, so that, you know, obviously, um, people also have to realise we've got a lot of um, uh, representation from the Indian community as well. Which so a lot not, of people actually don't realise. Yeah, a lot of people fair. don't really realise yeah. that. Mm. Uh, so to be fair, it's not only a Chinese-based party. Um, but of course, um, and this is changing now, we've got our first Karazan uh, elected rep uh, in the last election. Uh, we are trying to integrate and engage uh, the Iban community more in Sarawak. So basically, we're opening new ground. We are trying to reach out into areas which usually uh, was not, what you say, a, a natural audience for the DAP. But we're, we're, we're really trying. You're a very young politician and perhaps uh, have not been around for too long. You just I've turned 30. Just turned 30. <laughs> I've not heard about you much until the big name came about. Do you think you had, uh, your, your, your stardom came about in politics very much because of your father's name? Um, Keir Johari. I suppose that has some to do with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Although I think the CEC election... <laughs> I think that stirred it up more, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That probably you, you, are you still shocked with that, with what happened there? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's uh, not 100% not recovered yet. Oh. No, because we're now we've got a fresh election to come. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So did, did you think uh, the name has a lot to do with it? Kid Jahari's name? I mean, it, it has some to do with it. Uh, mm. It has some to do with it for sure. Um, I wouldn't say it has all to do with it. And also the fact that he's, um, he was uh, Amno's veteran and, you know, former cabinet minister. He's always been in the mainstream of politics and you decided to take the other side. So that's another uh, controversy. Uh, right? The other side, yes. Uh, although you have to understand, he was not from this generation of Amno. Okay. He was from a very... He was from the previous generation of Amnu, what you would call the struggling the for independence, generation, yeah. in which they were the opposition fighting against the British. Um, they were all teachers going in. None of them were businessmen. None of them took contracts. The respected Amnu people. Well, yes, the people who actually struggled for struggle for the for the sake of a real struggle and not for the sake of uh, enriching themselves. So they were really practicing what DAP is practicing today. Would you say that? Absolutely. In Sharamas, they used to uh, request for donations. Of course, today. You know, you mm. go to their function, they pay you money. All right. Yeah. Okay. Are you being used by um, DAP to attract the Malays to the party? I don't think so. Uh, I don't, it's never been some sort of uh, campaign to use me to attract people um, in a sense. Um, but I do feel there is a need for DAP to attract mm. uh, definitely a broader spectrum of Malaysians. Mm. Uh, we are doing our best. For example, one of the things that um, I helped to start when after I came in was rocketkini.com, which is our basically Malay language portal for DAP. Previously, we really had no um, none whatsoever, well, no real Malay medium channel of communication, That's and right. now we do. So, mm -hmm. what kind of increase of percentage has it been since you have joined the party with regards to the young professional Malays to the DAP party itself? Well, I think. Um, we don't have exact numbers, uh, I can't quantify that. But uh, what I can say is, uh, even in the last three years, mm -hmm. which I've been involved in politics, I can see sort of um, 
there is a warming up to people. Uh, when you talk to them, they're a bit more uh, able to accept the idea. Whereas previously, maybe, you know, it was very difficult to comprehend. Mm -hmm. um, and, and at the same time, uh, even my own team, uh, there are a lot of young Malay boys uh, who are, you know, just fresh graduates uh, and so on, who, who can understand what the party is about. I think that's more important. Malay, Malay boys. Malay boys, I mean, Malaysian boys, Chinese boys, uh, doesn't matter. Yeah. But uh, I, I actually have a very multiracial team. Yeah, but I suppose also that you, uh, it's easier for you because, um, number one, like, um, you know, because of your name, and number two, uh, there are also, uh, there's also a perception that uh, you are the um, blue-eyed boy, so to speak, of uh, Lim Kit Siang. Is that right? I and that's why it's much easier for you being in a you know in a majority Chinese based party. No, I, I don't know if I'm anyone's blue eyed boy. <laughs> I certainly don't have blue eyes. Okay. Um, no, I mean I think at the end of the day, uh, every position I've been given, or every position I've been appointed to, or every position I've earned, uh, I feel. Uh,